What's up guys, today at Lifestyle, we're gonna mount a rooftop tent into my one ton tow rig. This tow rig is awesome, it's been extremely reliable. I love towing around the country with it, but it doesn't have a place to sleep. I've slept in the cab a couple of times at rest stops. I'd like something a little bit more comfortable, and in today's video, I'm gonna make that possible. If you follow the overlanding scene at all, you have no doubt seen this new trend that has popped up in the last couple years of building a nice heavy duty bed rack to mount your rooftop tent and your pickup truck. These look awesome, they're super functional, they've got a whole bunch of junk hanging off the side, and I want to build something like this because I've seen a lot of kits to buy, but I haven't seen a whole lot of homemade versions, and I think this is something that a lot of people could make themselves. This is my 2006 Dodge Ram 3500, and this is the truck we're going to be working on today. This is a one ton, it's a 5 Cummins, it is a six speed manual, it is a mega cab, and it is a dually. There, that should answer all the questions I'm gonna be getting about this truck. Uh, almost 300,000 miles on the clock, and it doesn't skip a beat. This is a great truck. So I wanna make it to where I can camp out of it, and the best way to do that is just add on a rooftop tent. You can add on a rooftop tent to almost any vehicle, and you know, especially with something like this, it's not gonna even notice that it's got that little tent up there, and it's gonna make it to where I have a comfortable place to sleep whenever I tow way out in the back country, use my Jeep all day, I can come back to a rooftop tent instead of uh, setting up a tent on the ground or sleeping in the cab. I wanna get started right away. So what we're gonna do is cut some angle iron that's gonna go on the inside of this bed rail, and that'll be our foundation to build the rest of our rack. I just got done laying the foundation for this bed rack and it was stupid simple. All I did was take some angle iron and I trimmed it around where I needed to. I cut it to the right length. I plopped it in there. I drilled some holes and I mounted it. I used some grade eight hardware. I think it's three eighths by grade eight. It's some extra stuff that I'd laying in my bulk bin in the back of the shop. Um, you're gonna have to trim to fit no matter what you're working with. I recommend angle iron for this bottom piece because as you're welding everything up, it's gonna try to push and pull and tweak and you know change shape on you. But having a foundation that is made out of thick angle iron is gonna make it to where it's really hard for it to twist on you as you're fabricating all this stuff together. So this is what I choose for the bottom. Uh, you can use whatever you want. You can use something, just just flat bar. But again, I think that angle iron is the way to go. I clamped everything straight just to make sure that as I was drilling, nothing moved around on me. And right now we have a great foundation to start with. And the next step is gonna be a little bit more complicated. This bed rack is gonna be a two piece design. We're gonna have a main piece that will mount directly to the bed, and then we're gonna have a smaller piece that is gonna mount to the main piece. The smaller piece is gonna be what actually holds the rooftop tent in place. And I know right now this all sounds a little bit confusing, but as the video goes along and progresses, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. This is actually pretty simple. All the crucial points of this frame are gonna be made out of three inch by inch and a half rectangular tubing. This is way overkill to hold a 150 pound tent, but that gives us a lot of flexibility in the future that if I dismount this and I choose to put something heavier up there, I can. I held a tape measure up on the bed of the truck and it looked like 18 inches was about where we wanted it. So I cut a bunch of pieces down to 21 inches so I had a little bit of wiggle room and I wanted to make the pieces more manageable. So this was a 20 foot stick. I needed six pieces cut down so I cut them at 21 and then made some simple marks just to make sure that I have a consistent measuring point on both sides. Now what I did was I held one up here and it looked to me like 17 degrees was just about right. I liked it at 17, um, so I used my little angle finder here. Um, I saw 17 degrees up there. I checked to see what the angle was down here. We're at about four, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the bottoms at 20 degrees. That way they're gonna sit flush somewhere like that, and then I think I'm gonna cut the top at a 45. I think that I'll, be, I'll need to make a 60 degree turn here but if I open it up a little bit more than I need, it's gonna be easier for me to fabricate it. So instead of cutting two 30 degree um, pieces, I'm gonna end up cutting two 45 degree pieces and then just filling it with weld.
this rack is starting to take shape and I like the heights of everything. Everything's starting to look pretty good. I took some rough guesses as to where I wanted it to be. Um, this back section here, I wanna be able to reach through. And so I wanted this to be just a little bit above my eye line to where I can you know, shove my upper torso in there and it not be so tight that I can't get in there from the side or from the back without dropping the tailgate. I also don't want it to be too tall. If it's too tall, it's gonna push that rooftop tent way above the roof line and I think it's gonna look goofy. It's gonna be above the roof line a little bit, but I don't want it extremely tall. So there's a few things that are just gonna be based on taste as to how you build yours. Um, this one so far is reflecting my taste perfectly. Now, whenever you're constructing something like this, you don't have to get crazy with the kinds of tooling you use. I'm using just like a $20, $15, $20 angle finder in order to keep things zeroed out as I'm tacking them together. This is a four foot level. I, this is probably a 15 or $20 level. These aren't expensive. And I just use these kinds of tools to see how the, the bed is grading. And then I make sure that this is grading the same way whenever I start to tack things together. That way I know that I'm in the ballpark and as I build the rest of this structure, I can tweak it just a little bit, but I know that I'm not gonna break that tack because it's so close to where it's gonna need to be ultimately. Also, speaking of tack, I tack welded some extra bracing in here in order to keep things squared up throughout the, fabrica throughout the fabrication process. I put a square in this corner here, squared it out, and then I put a tack here and a tack there. So it'll hold this uh, scab piece in place, make sure that this is rigid. I mean, this is all just tacked together and I can shake the whole truck because of using some little scab pieces like this. One other scab piece I did is this one right here. Um, I just took a measurement from the inside of that corner to the inside of the other corner. I cut a piece and then I tacked it up here to make sure that this stays true from the back all the way to the front. Very simple techniques, very easy stuff. You don't have to be a master craftsman to put something like this together. You just need to think of how do you create simple solutions for simple problems. I've got four more structural members that I need to locate and cut before I can move on to the next step. Just like everything up to this point in the build, this is extremely easy. I'm not using any specialty tools. I'm just using a speed square that you can find at Lowe's, Home Depot, or even Walmart. If you invest the time to learn how to use some of these basic tools, you're gonna discover that you don't have to be an expert craftsman in order to do a cool project like this. This little project's moving right along and we've got the exterior frame taken care of. It's mostly welded, it's not completely finished welded, but it's welded solid enough that I know it's not going anywhere and it's not gonna budge whenever we're building the rest of this. So now we need to move on to the internal frame, the part that we're actually gonna be mounting the rooftop tent onto. We're gonna have hinges on one side and then we're gonna have latches on the other. Um, for now, I'm gonna do a generic latch system. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do long term, but everything I'm gonna be using for the hinge and the latch system is gonna revolve around these. I call these builder bushings. These come from a YJ, a Jeep YJ spring pack. So these replace the leaf spring bushings that come in a factory uh, YJ. You can get them at Foral Parts, you can get them on Amazon. There's a whole bunch of places you can get them and they fit perfectly in uh, different sizes of tube. And I like to use these for things like this. We're gonna use these as a hinge on one side because it's gonna be vibration dampening, which is nice. It'll be less squeaks and stuff like that. But they're also really durable. They're great for suspension, um, you know, engine mounts, transmission mounts, but we're gonna use them for a hinge. These probably last forever in this application, whereas you'd only get a few years as a suspension component. So now this build's gonna get a little bit tricky. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to go about the next part. I have some ideas. Um, I wanna build the hinges first, and then I'm gonna to start to build the inner frame and then figure out some sort of a really simple latch mechanism that's gonna be at the front of this rack. I'm gonna be building this inner piece of this frame out of this inch and a half tube. And my plan is to start with the hinges. So I am going to mount this bushing somewhere in here. I'll probably split this into thirds or something and put these on the outer thirds or, I don't know. I'll figure out a good spot that's wide and out of the way. And then I'm going to have to make some tabs that go from this to the bushing with a bolt. And this will be the hinge point. So we're gonna have a latch system in the front. It's gonna be able to raise up and down. It's gonna be able to pivot on these bushings. I think that this is gonna be the easiest way for me to fab this up without getting crazy. So I'm gonna start by mounting these bushings. I'm gonna locate them. I'm gonna tack some brackets together. I'm gonna build some really rudimentary brackets to mount on the back of this guy. 
And then once I get all of this tacked on here, I guess I can go through and weld the pieces that are gonna be going forward. And uh, once all that's taken care of, I can figure out this latching system. This was so easy. <laughs> it would be even easier for you guys if you don't want to have this inside piece. I think it's gonna be really rare that anyone else would build it the way that I have this built. Uh, because you don't really, most people don't need the tent to be able to raise up like I do. But you can see the basic concept. I've got two hinges over there. I've got two latches over here. These latches are super simple. It's literally a bolt that I just tack welded a handle to. And then there's a nut that's tack welded on the bottom side here. Right now, this is ultra light, but once we get a 150 pound tent on there, it's not gonna go up and down so easy. And so my long-term plan is to add some sort of like hood shock system, like you would see on a big heavy truck hood. I need to do a bunch of research and find out how to do it, but I wanna add some sort of a shock system so where once I unlatch this and I push it up, it'll assist in lifting up the tent and keeping it up while I'm getting into the toolbox. My brother came over and helped me mount this tent. Looks good up there, I like it. So now I'm ready to start on the little side panels. I'm very excited to mess around with these side panels because I just like anything where I can put some weird creative shapes in it. And this new tool is gonna help me do that. This is called a bead roller. I have very little experience with a bead roller, but I am just fascinated with all the bead roller stuff I see on Instagram. Uh, there are some very skilled bead roller people out there, and one day I'd like to be among them. So I'm going to start playing with this today on this panel. I'm gonna be using aluminum. I believe this is 18 gauge. I don't exactly remember. But in any case, I'm gonna be shaping this with a couple of different tools. We're gonna to be using the bead roller. I have a tool in the back of the shop here that you guys haven't seen me use on the channel before, um, but you have seen me talk about it. This is a three-in-one shear, brake, and roller. So between the bead roller, this tool, and some dimple dies, I'm gonna play around with some material and I'm gonna see if I can get a really cool off-road look. notice I'm a little bit brighter. I've got my studio light set up and I've got it turned all the way up so I can clearly see this line in the die. I really don't want to mess this up. It takes a long time in order to do a full layout like this. I'm not worried about the dimple die holes. I'm not worried about the metal brake. I'm worried about the bead roller because I'm just so inexperienced with this thing. So we're going to start with the bead roller. I'm going to bead roll two of these panels. If it goes well, I'm going to continue on. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to recut and retry this whole thing. So anyway, 
I know that I'm probably way overexposed from that light, but I've gotta be able to see what the heck it is that I'm doing. Let's give this a shot. All right, I think that's gonna work. It's not perfect around the corners, but I, I'm satisfied. This, this will do for my purposes. The lines are straight enough and the curves are curved enough. Um, in the future, as my experience grows and my ability grows, I'll probably fab up something different, but this should look pretty sweet when it's all done. I'm gonna have some dimple sections in the center portion of this piece, and it's gonna try to give it a U shape. On the outsides of the piece, I wanna bend them at a 45. So I'm choosing to do the bends on the outsides first to try to make the piece rigid before I move on to the dimple dissection. And this is like pretty much capacity. It's really close to max capacity of this unit, meaning I'm gonna have to put a lot of force in order to get a 45. I've never shown you guys how to use this, so I just wanted to take a minute and show you how I do it. We're gonna use this angle finder. We're gonna place it on there. We wanna get it to like 22 degrees or so because 22 degrees on this side and 22 degrees on, the, on that side will make a 44. We're going for a 45 or somewhere thereabouts. So you're gonna see me squirm, but I'm gonna push really hard on this and see if we can make a bent section here. All right, there's 10 degrees, so we have a 20 degree bend. I'm gonna have to flip this towards me. There's 23. So that means we have a 46 degree bend. There we go, got a nice little bend. This bend, whenever you're going at max capacity of a piece of equipment like this, especially, I mean, this is Harbor Freight, it's not the highest quality, there's a little bit of a bow in the center, and so I'm gonna take it to the vise after this. I'm just gonna kinda put a little bit of force on the inside to, to work the piece straight. But now all I gotta do is make the other side match, and I can move on. Panels are officially mounted up. I think it looks awesome. They were really easy to mount. I took some angle iron. I cut some little tabs out of it. I used a tap and die set. I tapped them to a quarter by 20. I keep a lot of stainless quarter by 20 hardware on hand for this kind of thing specifically. And then I just kind of threaded it all together and tack welded it on there. Now that it's all tacked, we get to see a somewhat finished product. I am not gonna be able to finish this in this episode. We're gonna definitely have to do a round two. If you're familiar with my channel at all, you know that I usually try to combine everything into one big video for a project like this, but there's just no way. This was already four really long days of filming, editing, and building, so there's no way that I can do the rest of the things that I wanna to add to this. I wanna add some lights, so I'm gonna do a whole bunch of wiring in the next video, add a switch, because I wanna be able to flip a switch and see down into the bed really clearly. Cause you know, if it's in the middle of the night and you wanna to get to your camping gear, it'd be nice to be able to flip that switch and check out and see what you're working with. Also, a tailgate works as a great place to cook. So I wanna be able to see what I'm cooking, if I'm cooking in the dark. Um, anyway, so we all know lights are great for a lot of things like that. I'm gonna be adding that into the next video. And I also want to add some gusseting and some more flare, but I need a little bit more time to think about that, as well as those shocks so we can lift this bad boy up, paint it, open this tent up and check it out. So this next episode is gonna be way too big for me to try to squeeze it all in with this one as well. 
If you like what you saw and you wanna see more like it, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of how-to content on here just like this and I, I love building these kinds of things. If you're into that, make sure that you follow along. If you wanna help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, stickers, we have patches now. We have a whole bunch of different things that you can help uh, support the channel that way. We also have a link to our Patreon account. And if you've learned anything from any of my videos, consider supporting us there as well. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.